guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. So I thought I would finish the globe today and um, expound upon some other options that you could also do as far as the globes are concerned. So we will we will chat about that and I'll show you some of those some of those other ideas. So when last I left you, we had finished the top of of the globe and I there were a couple of suggestions which were fabulous uh, from some subscribers and one of them was to notch the ring when you put the when you put the horizontal ring through this way to notch that original ring I just took a craft knife and just made a little indention little cut out of this ring and in between those little supports that we had put on the outside. And then I just glued everything back together. And I used super glue. And wow, that's really nice because it is, it is sturdy. <laughs> I highly suggest super glue. Something that's fast grab and permanent would be amazing. So that, that was it. And then I was playing around with some different some different beads and findings to add to the end of this pin. I just found this little star-shaped little bead and then a little pearl that just went on over it. You can use whatever you'd like, but that is, that's what I chose. So, a good idea would be to cut the sharp edge the sharp point off of that pin. You don't want to you don't want to hurt yourself. <laughs> and then later on, if you want to put a dot of glossy accents on the edge of that to create a bead, you could. Should I zoom this one in a little bit? I can do that. And then you can also paint these if you if you would like, or you can just leave them as pearls or whatever. can touch up anything else you want. I had sanded on the edges of these rings so they were pretty distressed which I wanted but if you take away too much and you want to add some more shimmer back then by all means. This is going to be my stand and this is one of the chess pieces that Renee sent to me. Thank you, Renee. It is lovely. I wrapped the the wooden chess piece in, I think it was like a, a rubber, like a latex glove. I just wrapped it so that when I clamped it into the little vise, it wouldn't leave teeth marks from the vise jaws in, in the piece. So I had it securely held so that I didn't have to hold it because bad things happen when I try to hold things and then saw or cut on them. So maybe try, you know, using something else to hold them, even like a clamp on, on a table or something you could, anyway. And then I just sawed away at the top um, until I could fit the edge of the ring down into that slot. And that's really all I did. It, as simple as that. As far as this one goes, you can leave it just wooden if you wanted to or if you want to paint it to match everything. This was one of those little tags that I showed you last time that I painted with just some gold paint because that's going to be the base. I just wanted it to be a little bit bigger than just, just this. And then this was the chipboard pieces that I glued together. And then I glued on one of these little filigree jewelry findings. And then I painted the whole thing gold. And so that will get attached to that. Hopefully I'll, oh man, this glue just comes out like nobody's business. You don't need very much. That's where they get you. The glue comes out so fast and and you run out in like four days. Like, where'd my glue go? Well, half of it got wiped away. My thing about super glue is, it's super. And as soon as you set it down, it is done. It is, you're, you're done. 
So let's see. Do you know what? I think I'm just going to leave it the stained wood color. I, I think I like that. And then I'm going to glue the edge of the ring into the notch I made in the pawn and it fits very well with a little bit of, of snugness so it's not super loose in there which I wanted it to fit nice and snug. You can make your angle any way you want. I, I like it at just a little bit of an angle, just a, just a little bit. I'm going to put a little super glue. I say a little bit, it's never a little bit, but you don't need a lot. And I'm going to slide that ring down in there. And within just a few minutes, that should be done forever. I won't be able to take that off. So here's the original one. I'll set it up. And this one, I had put these little beads here. It's the same one that I put down on, on this edge, underneath this bead. I'm not going to put it on here. I, I don't think it needs it. Now all I have to do, because that, that, that is done, that's done for, we're, we're, we're stuck. Now I'm just going to put some glue on the bottom of my chest piece. Spin it around and make sure we are centered. Hot glue would probably also work fairly well for this part. Hot glue is bulky and stringy, so I don't like to use it for delicate, tiny areas, but it's great if you're not going to be seeing it anyway. Here is our remake of, of the globe, and they're both very, very similar, but I as you can see, I painted the, the pawn on this one. This one, the pawn is a little bit bigger, but I like it just as well. And I think I like the wood, the wood different, the tone of the wood is a little different, so I think I like that too. Set those aside. So with the kit, there's gonna be several different types of maps, different colors and that kind of stuff. There's going to be the, the brighter turquoisey colored one, an old fashioned -y, sepia toned one and so there's going to just be some different colors but I also wanted to do a celestial kind of a map or two so I created this one this black one with some constellations it's not going to be accurate as far as a real map is concerned because um, I created it so it's a fantasy celestial map there are real, it's real constellations. It's just, I, I don't know. I just kind of messed with them and I put stuff where I wanted to put stuff. So another thing that I did was, um, somebody had mentioned in the comments, they asked me, why did I cut the gores apart? And the reason why I cut the gores apart is because I got a smoother result if I cut them apart and put them on one by one. But I started playing around with it. And what I ended up doing was I changed the gore so that there would be a, a few more. So there were 12 and this one has 15. And by them having more gores, you can leave them together as far as, I mean, you can leave them together anyway, but as far as I'm concerned, it is, and it's still really smooth. And I actually printed on paper, not tissue paper, but I printed on this is just like cheap packing paper. I am at um, home improvement stores and it's basically moving for moving when you wrap up your stuff. So it's, it's paper, but you could print on it. You can put it in your printer and print on it, but it's not as thick as copy paper. You can still use regular copy paper, use the lightest weight one you can find, but this is lighter than that. I still do tape it down to a piece of cardstock before I send it through just because I want a nice smooth print. And when you, when you print on thinner paper, it has a tendency to, to wrinkle on you, or it can. So anyway, because I made more gores on this map, I was able to leave them all attached. But I do suggest making your paper a little bit shorter, just a little bit, and then taping the edge of the cardstock to the edge of the paper so that when it grabs, when your printer grabs it here, it's actually grabbing the cardstock. And because sometimes if you don't have it, like if it's like this, and 
it's not attached down at the bottom, it will grab and it'll pull like this and you don't want that. And then of course there will be a page of the Meridian Horizon band, the measurement ring that goes on on the Horizon or Meridian bands if you want to add them. You don't, you don't have to. There will be cut files for the rings. If you want to put rings on your globe with your, with your die cut machine, or if you just want to use it as a template and cut it out with scissors, that's fine too. But there will be these in case you want to make those. And then I decided that I would go ahead and make as part of the printable, a stand that could be cut out. This little stand can be cut out with a die cut machine and it's you know, a mid-century modern, I would say, shaped desk stand or tabletop stand. And as you can see, the globe sits in there upright, and but it still, it still spins. I still have it on my cutting mat. I need a new one of these. The rings are a little bit differently sized. This is a U.S. letter size cardstock but you could also fit it on a four. That's what's so great about cut files is that it doesn't really matter what size they are because if you use the vector image, which is the SVG or DXF if you have an older machine, it can be sized pretty much indefinitely and it won't pixelate because it's not a raster image. It doesn't have a limit. Vector images don't have limits to their resizing capabilities. So they'll, the edges will stay smooth because they are created with paths and not with pixels. So let me just get some of these off. <laughs> we'll just, cause you only need like four of these, these shaped ones and then you can use some of you can use some of those as well. I'll show you. So what I did was I created these so that all you had to do was fold it in half exactly, just leg to leg like this. And you'll need four of them. And you can cut these out of heavier material if you would like. You could double them up if you want it like really, really super, super sturdy. And there's, like I said, there should be an, enough to make two stands for each page of cutouts. And, but that's if you don't double up your pieces. And then you glue together the edges to make your base. And I'm gonna do that here on camera, but I'm going to speed through it. I, it won't be a, a talk through kind of a thing, but I will put one together so that it doesn't take me four or five hours to get off tangent <laughs> and I start talking. Uh, these little pieces are gonna be supports. They're there in case, they're, they're there in case you want to use them, but you don't have to use them. They're just for extra support. And then these rings, um, are just the right size to sit on the outside of these little arms once all that is glued together. And when you glue them together, there will be, there should be, a little space right down here in the center. And that is where I sunk down the support that I used for the globe. And what I used was this, this is just some jewelry wire, it's just some, I think it's aluminum, and I'm trying to remember what gauge it is. I think it's 18. Mm -mm -mm. It's not super tiny. It's not like a it's not like a boutonniere pin. It's not that skinny. It's more like the thickness, maybe a little bit thinner than a toothpick. But I wanted it sturdy. I so the thinner that your support is, it can be very sturdy. But the thinner that it is the more the more play you will have in back and forth wobble of the globe. All I did was just make the hole a little bit bigger in the top and the bottom of the globe. Like here, here's this globe. So this is one that I finished the other day and look how shiny it is. I like the way it looks when it's super shiny like that. And all I used was uh, fingernail polish, you know, clear fingernail polish. That's all I used. You could probably use any kind of 
polyurethane or I had some clear fingernail polish sitting there. So, I mean, it doesn't go in my hands, so I might as well use it for something. And you only need it to be about half an inch longer than the globe is tall. But I'll cut it a little bit long just for safety's sake. And then you'll see me put, put it together. But I just wanted to show you that it still spins. If you, it depends on how big you make, you pierce the hole in, in the poles as to how freely it spins. And this one doesn't spin, it, I mean, it spins nicely. It's just less, less spinny. <laughs> That's what I put on, on with this one, just so that it would be a nice little sturdy put together thing. This one was made out of black cardstock. And then after I glued it together and I painted over it with just some matte black acrylic paint was all it was, just some craft paint. And then for this one, I just cut this one out of craft cardstock and it could be inked with distress ink, or you could do a paint wash with some burnt umber. Do you like half paint, half water, and just brush that on, let it dry completely, and then make your pieces. And it would make it kind of look like wood if you wanted like a wood stand. And you don't even have to use gold paint on these at all. And with the horizon bands, these on the bottom, these are gonna, these are a little bit bigger, and these fit these rings that go on the tabletop stand. These smaller rings are the original ones that go for the original globe and all that will be, all that information will be in there. But I wanted you to be able to make the original globe if you had the extra ingredients to, to do so. But I also wanted you to be able to just make one out of paper if you didn't have chess pieces or if you didn't, you know, all these different things. And if you want to finish it off with, with some little beads, you can. You don't have to. You can definitely just use like a paper punch, just plain old paper punch. And you can glue these little paper punch outs together to make spacers to go in between where your globe glues down to the stand. And I will use these when I put together the this tabletop globe. I will use these to show you that so that you don't have to use the beads if you don't want to on the top and the bottom. And then for the bottom, for this base, I just used the middles that came out of the rings. And I think I glued three together here. And then for this ring here, there were two rings glued together for that. But you can use as many or as few as you would like. All right, the other um, one I'm going to attempt to show you in the little fast forwardy thing will be a half meridian type of globe. And I'm gonna show you a picture of that on the screen and you're gonna go, oh yeah, I know what that is. <laughs> As soon as you see it, they're very recognizable. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make one of those two and um, put that on the screen to show you when we're done. So you can have some different options to kind of to kind of go for. You can look all over the interwebs, check out different styles of globes, and there are some super wicked cool ones. You can try to recreate anything your little heart desires. Just be patient when cutting out your gores because it's gonna take a minute, especially if you use big old scissors like I use. This was a test one that I printed out, but the, the one in the kit has a nice defined equator along the middle. And I also put a new equator band on map gores too, so that it would be very, very obvious. So that will help you in getting your map on your globe evenly if you've got that horizon band to help you match everything up along the way. 